Hi, everybody. Welcome to the October 1963 issue of World Harvest Magazine, which I have in my hand right here. Now, this came out, like I said, in October of 1963. On the cover uh, is a picture of an elderly Chinese woman. And then on the inside cover, Brother Sumrall has a, a short story here of his his wife, Louise, who encountered this sad Chinese woman. And uh, it tells a story there. It's, it's really kind of heartbreaking about the plight of some of these people over there in Asia. Then on the second page, he's got news articles that were popular at the time, that they things that related to Christianity and whatnot. He's got a little piece there about Madeline Murray, who was an atheist woman who managed to go to the Supreme Court, and she got prayer taken out of the public schools in Baltimore. And that was the initial catalyst that started the whole thing, where then eventually it got taken out of all public schools. Some of these uh, little news articles here are really... <laughs> it just makes you see how our society has really, really gone severely downhill since 1963. It says that the state education commissioner at that time, James E. Allen of New York, he ruled that the fourth stanza of the song America could not be sung in opening school anymore. And the fourth stanza of that song is the stanza that went, Our Father's God to Thee, Author of Liberty, to Thee we sing. Long may our land be bright with freedom's holy light. Protect us by Thy might, great God, our King. And this guy made it illegal for that to be sung in schools anymore at that point. And then it says that meanwhile in Alabama, the state school board ordered public schools to continue the reading of prayers and the Bible as a part of prescribed classroom exercise. And Governor Wallace at that time, he was the governor of Alabama back then, actually three or four different times he was governor. But he declared that if the Supreme Court should try to stop Bible reading in any Alabama school... He said, quote, I'm going to that school and read it myself. <laughs> I thought that was interesting. So there were, there were some people that were fighting against this move at that time. But we know what eventually wound up happening. Now on page four, uh, Brother Summerall has an ad there for some meetings that he's going to be holding at the North Park hotel in Chicago back at that time. It shows a picture of the hotel and it, and it tells the days of of the meetings. It was on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, October 1st through October 5th that year. Then we have an article called Asia in Turmoil, which is quite a long article by Brother Summerall here. I read the whole thing and uh, it's really interesting. He talks about what was happening over in the Orient at that time. He describes his, his trip out there and stopping in Honolulu first and then, and then going on over. And he talks a little bit about the Soviet Union at that time and things that were happening in communist China and in Hong Kong and all those things. So it's, it's actually very educational historically about what was going on at that time as far as them spreading the gospel and whatnot. Because World Harvest was very much a missionary magazine. For the entire life of the magazine, that's basically what it was. And that's 
his main thing that he was doing at this time in 1963. He wasn't really uh, located in one spot as a pastor of any particular church at that time. Uh, he raised up four different churches in the Philippines, and then there was the one in Hong Kong, the one down in Brasilia, and then the one in South Bend. And then there were many other churches in other places that, that sprang up from meetings that he held around the world. So what he was doing at that time was real similar to like what the Apostle Paul did, really. He'd go around in different cities and he'd raise up churches in different places. He's got an article here on page 7 about starting your own ministry in gospel films. Which at that time it was, it was becoming popular for people to... Uh, start making like home movies and things like that. It was a little bit more available to get film projectors and do that type of thing. So he was actually advertising this film that he had made back at that time. I talked about it in previous issues here. The film was called The Master Plan of World Harvest. And I've never seen the film. And well, maybe I have. I might have seen it when I was a little kid and don't remember. But uh, I don't know where this film is available anymore. I searched for it online. I couldn't find anything out about it at all. But he's talking about uh, people starting their own ministry and taking this film and showing it in different places. Isn't that interesting? Because that's kind of what a lot of people are doing now with digital technology, which is what I'm doing on my YouTube channel and on Rumble. Then on the center of the magazine, it's an article by Reverend Reuben Candelaria, who was the pastors of one of the churches in Manila, in the Philippines. And he talks here about their ninth anniversary services that they had. And there's a picture of the congregation there with Brother Sumrall standing up on the platform. And, and then it talks a little bit about what he was doing with the Full Gospel Businessmen's Association meetings in the United States. And there's pictures there of him uh, anointing a group of pastors and speaking at the Hilton Hotel there in Denver. Now, I thought this article was quite interesting after that. It's called Divine Providence Brought Two Men Together. And this is an article by Reverend Howard Carter, who was the English statesman evangelist that Brother Sumrall toured the world with in the early days of his ministry back in the 1930s. And it was really an act of God that brought the two of them together. It was really an interesting story, and Brother Sumrall tells about it a lot in a lot of his different books. He talked about it in Run With the Vision and in The Life Story of Lester Sumrall and in some of the other books that he wrote. He told about his meeting with Howard Carter, how he met him, how God brought them together miraculously. And they went on this missionary evangelism tour around the world in all different places. Well, this article here is Howard Carter's version of the same story. So it was really interesting to me because I had read the story many times from Brother Sumrall's viewpoint. And this here is the same story from Howard Carter's viewpoint. He was a very old man at this point. He was much older than Lester Sumrall was. And uh, as far as I know, I think he lived in South Bend, actually, for a short time. I might have met the man when I was a little kid. I don't know. I don't remember. But that article is really quite fascinating. Then there's a there's an article here by Brother Summerall on page 12. And then it goes into part of page 13, too. It's called A Fourfold World Challenge. Now, like I said before, these articles in these magazines... These articles are one of a kind, these articles that he published in this magazine. So, it's really rare things here. And this one's called A Fourfold World Challenge. And he talks about how the New Testament 
was written originally in the Greek language. When the world is talked about, there's actually four different Greek words that are translated as just world in English. So he talks about how it's important to know uh, the meanings of each of these four words. For instance, everybody knows John 3.16, where it says, For God so loved the world, right? But then, in John 18.36, in the same gospel, Jesus says, My kingdom is not of this world. And he goes through the different meanings of it. So it's a really fascinating article there. And then on page 13, we have the story of a, a deliverance of a little girl there in South Bend. And then there's an article by the editor, Three Steps to Positive Action. In this article here, he says that in these three steps, firstly, you have to know something. And then you have to be something. And third, you have to do something. Okay, and he elaborates on this. Then he has his book reviews on the last page. And he reviews a book by Howard Carter on the gifts of the Spirit. And then he reviews one of his own books called Lillian Trasher, Nile Mother. Uh, this book is very, very rare. I found where it is available some places online in a PDF form. Now, of course, you have to join the join the club and everything in order to download PDFs from it, but I do believe it is available in that way online. I don't have it in a PDF form, but I have the hard copy. This was copyright 1951, Lillian Trasher, Nile Mother by Lester Sumrall. It's a hardback book, and it's 177 pages. I think this is interesting. Uh, this must have belonged to my grandfather because he was an elder in the church. So he was kind of like in the inner circle there in the church of South Bend. And uh, this one, this is office copy. So it had to belong to my grandfather for him to get get the office copy like this that they had there. But the download for this entire magazine will be in the description box underneath this video, just like all the previous ones. And like I said, this is a very rare magazine. Uh, I don't believe that you're going to find it anywhere else other than right here on this channel. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I ask that these resources would go forth and that they would encourage your people and strengthen them and give them new insight into many different things from this old magazine because we can gain insight from things that you've done in the past and we can apply it to our lives now. Lord, I give you all the glory. I ask that you'd bless everyone listening. I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. All righty. Like, subscribe, and share these videos. Help me get the word out and share these free PDF downloads to other people. And I'll see you the next time around. Love y'all. Bye bye.